Hello, this is Mike Lively, and this is Professional Paper Vision, and we're looking at the last video of Chapter 1 on animation. You're probably thinking, well, why animation? Haven't we been talking about animation the whole time? And we have, but we're specifically going to look at Walt Disney's rules of animation and how to produce those using Flash CS4, new motion editor. Now, Walt Disney, of course, canonized uh, animation, and he had a number of rules for animation. I think there were about 100 of them. And I've actually summarized them in five categories. So let's take a look at them real quick. And so if you're going to build animation, even if it's action scripting, you want to have these five things in there. Squash and stretch, exaggeration, anticipation, follow through, and wait. I actually have a little animation running here, and we'll see how each five of these are satisfied in this animation. So here's my bouncing ball. And uh, let's talk about the different uh, categories. Category one, squash and stretch. This occurs when a soft object comes in contact with a hard surface. And you can see that right here. As my object is bouncing against the floor, it's actually stretching and squashing. Exaggeration, it brings attention to an activity that's being performed. And even though I'm squashing and stretching, I'm going a little too much squash and stretch for a physical reality. But what's happening is it's bringing attention and emphasizing that animation is how I'm stretching out a little bit more than I should but it really looks fun so let's take a look at the next one anticipation and follow through anticipation is the prep before the action and follow through is the action after the action so you can imagine that you're throwing a ball so you are really wind up and then you throw it and you follow through a little bit more than you should but it really adds to the animation you can see here there's a little bit of anticipation when the ball is kind of freezes up here at the top and you've got this shadow here that's bouncing, that's stretching, and that shadow can be thought of as your follow through. And then finally, of course, there's weight. And a lot of people miss this, but if you're carrying a heavy box in an animation, you've got to look like you're straining. And if it's a light as a feather, then you're just walking with no problem. And once again, we see the effect of weight here as in terms of gravity. So it's just not linearly bouncing up and down. It's actually, you know, has a, an easing effect that looks like gravity is occurring. So remember these five and as you animate make sure you include those and later on in the chapter we'll talk about a physics engine called Jiglib and which enables us to do that programmatically fairly easily with some objects. And now we're going to go to Flash CS4 and show you how to accomplish this using the new motion editor. Now before we get started I want to talk about one of my favorite references and this is www.linden.com I have been a member of lynda.com for years and I just love the product and I want to encourage you to become a member as well. It's about $25 a month and it gives you tons and tons of video training. More videos than you could watch in a lifetime and many of them are very current which will enable you to come up to speed very rapidly. Let's take a look at lynda.com real quick and here's for example a chapter on CS4 professional training and we're actually in this area talking about the motion editor and this is by Todd Perkins, and I love Todd Perkins. have watched him for years on his various video uh, sites. And getting started drawing in Flash, um, working with text, uh, working with symbols, working with the timeline, creating shape tweens, uh, creating motion tweens, which we're going to discuss today. And uh, basically, I want to tell you guys, don't just become a member of the site, but use the site. And, and technology is changing so rapidly. You've got to get in the mode where you're constantly training. And I'm talking about training at least two hours a day in addition to your regular job. And this will actually give you the competitive edge to remain employed and actually to become a leader in the field. So here's a great resource. I just can't plug them enough. And now let's move on to Motion Tween. Flash CS4 has a whole new host of animation tools, including its motion editor, which allows you to do some really cool things, even on the level of 3ds Max. What we're going to do in this example is decompose this bouncing ball, show you how it was made, and hit some of the highlights of the motion editor, and show you how to turn it into action script. We're actually in Flash CS4 right now, and when I click on the ball, I can actually see the motion path. See that right there? Now, one of the cool things you can do without even going into the motion editor is just grab that path and stretch it to a different place. Let's go and run that and see what it looks like. Isn't that cool? Without even going into the motion editor, I now have a different path that my ball is following. Let's go ahead and do that. Hit Control Z. How do you find the motion editor? Just go to Window and click on Motion Editor. And up it comes. And look at all those curves. Wow! I can actually control those curves just by moving an endpoint. 
And this is my timeline for the ball. So as I move it, you can see the whole animation curve of the ball. You can actually add keyframes by clicking on the center button here. There, see I added a keyframe and I can move that around now. I actually changed its position. You can come down here and add all types of easing. Let's scroll down to the bottom here. You have a whole type of easing. You can just hit this plus button and choose from a huge menu of possible easing options. Boy, isn't that easy. Say goodbye to package motion tween. You got it here automatically. So once you've created your tween motion, you set your curves and you have them the way you want them, you want to convert this into action script. Let me show you how to do that right now. So I'm back in the timeline and here's my tween motion. If I scrub that, you can see the ball going up and down. So I want to turn all that into action scripts. So I can bring it into CS4 or Paper Vision and control it programmatically. So all you have to do is right click on this timeline right here. Let's move down a little bit on this menu so you can see it. Let me right click on the timeline again and there you have copy motion as action script. Let's go and do that. And once you hit that, it actually put all that action script that created this motion tween into your clipboard. Let's just open up Flash and create an action script file and dump it into it so you can see it. So let's hit new. Uh, action script file. There you go. And let's paste that code. And that's what was put into my clipboard. All that animation is now created using the animation factory. And if you could run that in Paper Vision or CS4 using that engine, and look at that, isn't that beautiful? That is just lovely. Now we're going to do more of this later on in the book, but this is an introduction on how to do that. Now if you want to see this again, go ahead and purchase the book, and I have a complete write-up on that. That is the end of Chapter 1, and let's move on to working with Paper Vision and moving it into CS4.